This, uh, this shows uh, population growth from 2010 to 2020 over the next 10 years, and you can see which, uh, you know, where are the population segments that are growing, uh, and essentially it's b my generation of boomers. I was born in 1946. And, uh, and we go for another 20 years, the baby womb, and now we're just celebrating our 65th birthday. We're in denial. I got a ticket from the TTC. I said, I want a senior's ticket, and he didn't ask for my ID. <laughs> I, Jesus, do I, I look that bad. I was depressed. I, I still haven't got over, you can tell. God. I'm not getting old. I'm a boomer. I'm getting better. I'm like a bottle of Bordeaux, so <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, here we are. We are going to get old, most of us, and uh, that's what the future looks like. It's the growing segment. Uh, it, if you look at, you know, how we've, you know, population growth in Canada, and then if you project ahead, if we didn't have any immigration, we would be declining, right? Fertility rates go down. We find this with immigrants. Again, I'm going to, every time I see this stuff, I go off in a segue. Immigrants come to our country no matter where they come from, and even if you think it's religious patriarchy they bring, let me tell you, the women stop having babies. And very quickly, they are at the norm of 2.1 or even less. Some groups are actually lower than the Canadian population that's been here generations or more. So again, put that in perspective. What a woman does with her body is a real indicator of social change, whether it's abroad or whether it's here in Canada. We now have 20% foreign born in Canada. It's the highest number since 1931. You'd say, oh, I don't remember back, and you probably don't remember 1931. But after the First World War, we brought in a lot of immigrants from Central and Eastern Europe to fill the vast expanse of the Canadian West, right? And that's the big numbers that you see in the, in the 20s and, uh, and uh, in, the, in the teens and 20s. And then, of course, the Great Depression. Nobody wanted to come to Canada. There was nothing going on here anyway. And then after the war, more and more people started to come. And now we're up to about you know, a quarter of a million people. We have 6 million immigrants, 20% foreign-born. It's probably a little higher than now. This is 06 census. Australia's at 22. But I think we've actually uh, now have eclipsed Australia. U.S. is an immigrant country, but it's only, well, just over half the proportion that we have in Canada. Ours come from around the world. Theirs come from of very few places, Mexico, obviously, Latin America, and so on. It's a, it's a narrower range than our wide range of people. As you can see here, look at this before, just look at the first bar and the last bar here. Before 1961, Europe, 90%. Now look, Europe, 16%. And we got Asia, uh, Middle East, Asia, <clears throat> Caribbean, United States. Actually, we asked people, <laughs> We did a survey recently for the Institute for Canadian Citizenship as our partner and so on, and we asked people uh, uh, about citizenship and how proud they were about the country they came from. <laughs> and the Americans, of course, were, <laughs> among all the people, were among the least proud <laughs> to have come from the country they came from. Of course, these are draft dodgers and deserters and people who are looking at Republicans. And <laughs> I guess... <laughs> I don't know... <laughs> Um, anyway, you can see, you know, around the world, this is where they come from. Now, you'll probably be surprised, UK, well, that's after the Second World War. I mean, they came in droves in the late 40s and in the 50s, so it's still the largest source country of the six million immigrants, but then China, India, of course, India and Pakistan, Philippines, and so on. So look at this, 15 countries have given us 100,000 or more. That's a city. Right? So there are 15 cities of 100,000 or more, but these are from specific countries around the world. 82 countries have given Canada 10,000 people or more, and 150 countries 1,000 or more. If those 1,000 people from those 150 countries have a pretty good time here, in other words, if they get jobs, if they get jobs more or less in line with the qualifications they bring, if their kids go to school, and blow our socks off with all those, you know, in terms of uh, doing well in school. And they do. The program of international student assessment shows that first and second generation immigrants actually outscore people on literacy, numeracy, and problem solving than people who've been here three generations or more. They may not have been Protestants, but they sure brought the Protestant ethic, I'll tell you that. So. This chart is interesting. Um, <clears throat> 
in it, sorry, it's backwards. The, the question, the phrase is, <clears throat> do you agree or disagree, there's too much immigration in Canada? We could have said there's too little immigration, but we use that phrase. We started in 1977. 61% in 1977, yeah, there's too much immigration in Canada. And they said that all the way through <clears throat> until the late 90s. When somebody put something in the water, because Canadians started to change in the late 90s. There was some tipping point. I haven't done a book on this, but something happened in Canada where it just changed. And you'll see other charts here. Look at them. If you've got a kid in university who wants to do a PhD, I'll give them the data. I'd like to know what happened and why but we change somehow. So look what happens at the turn of the millennium, and then you get people um, disagreeing that we have too much immigration in Canada from, what, about 2000 uh, right till. We had a little blip a couple of years ago after that uh, Great Recession, but now we're back up at 58%. What else do we think? Immigrants take away jobs from other Canadians. 74% disagree, and it seems to be flatlined again from the late 1990s. 24% <clears throat> agree. Too many immigrants are not adopting Canadian values. Now, I could take 15 minutes on this. Too many immigrants are not adopting Canadian values. This needs a lot of unpacking, okay? What are Canadian values? What do people mean by Canadian values? I have a book on this. We've done a survey again on what it means to good, be a good Canadian citizen. The short form is this. Canadian values are treating everybody equally. When we say that, we mean gender equality. We evolved over the last 50 years from religious patriarchy to, to equality. We want our young women to do as well as our young men. In fact, we're now hoping our young men will catch up to the young women. <laughs> it's happened pretty quickly. Um, <clears throat> gender equality, religion, patriarchy. And it's very interesting that the issue on this is the issue of how women dress. Interesting. So I'm a guy, again, not everything's a joke, but I'm a guy who kind of worries about his daughter wearing too few clothes, right? I mean, the way women walk around, you know. But there is a concern among some cultures about, you know, too many clothes, like hijabs, niqabs, burqas, and all of this. Quebec is particularly concerned about this. In the mid-50s, right, the one daughter, you know, one daughter went into the convent and went around looking like a penguin. And it looked like this is what people were telling them to do. And we care very much that women do what they want to do and aren't doing it because some guy is telling them to do it. And I think a lot has to do with the whole question of gender equality, of, uh, of, of women and men being equal, and, and, uh, and our determination. And I think that the symbolism of issues that we're seeing, uh, and uh, you know, the, which we're seeing, and we sometimes use that term honor killing and so on, has got us all scared. Now we need to settle down. I'm going to do another survey of Muslim Canadians. Uh, we're going to find out about women and what they're wearing and what they want to wear. It's interesting that in Turkey, when Ataturk took over, he dictated that it would be a secular culture and women wouldn't wear a hijab anymore. Now as Turkey is thinking of joining the European Union, they're being told that you can't tell women what to wear. So the liberal policy is one in which women are allowed to wear traditional headdress. Again, your brain kind of gets twisted around there, but women are allowed to do this. And of course, when I went to Mass, my mom and I and the family went to Mass in the 50s, mom put on a, a little headscarf and men took their hats off. So what is reasonable accommodation? What is religious patriarchy? I think this is part of what's going on here. And again, we've got to, we always go halfway. When men wore turbans, we said fine. As long as they don't make all the Mounties wear turbans, it's okay. You know, so what do the Canadians do? Again, it's kind of a reasonable accommodation, and you're going to find it in the workplace and elsewhere. What's halfway? What is reasonable? Let me tell you, we have a criminal code. We have a charter of rights and freedoms. We have stop signs. We have laws. And then the question is, what after that is reasonable accommodation?